You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. God's Pure Word of Faith with Richard Harden can now be heard Monday through Friday mornings at 7 a.m. Central, 8 Eastern, and on Saturday and Sunday mornings at 6 a.m. Central, 7 Eastern. Join him and let's turn our country back to God. It only takes a spark to start a forest fire. Let's get on fire for the Lord. Right here on KLRN Radio and the Spark Radio Network. Visit Richard's website at raharden.com. That's the World Wide Web at r-a-h-a-r-d-i-n dot com. At his website, you can see a summary of the six books he has written where purchases may be made. He also has a link to 18 videos on YouTube and several blogs about Christian beliefs. If you prefer, visit Amazon.com backslash Kindle and type in Richard Harden to see and purchase his books. Each of my programs are being saved so that you can listen to them at any time. There's just four simple steps to find the past programs. Go to www.spreaker.com. That's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. Enter my name, Richard Harden, in the search box in the top center of the home page. Click on the brown icon, which has the Bible, two candlesticks, and a cross in the background. A list of my programs will come up. You're listening to God's Pure Word of Faith with Richard Harden. Richard will guide you through the Bible and help you find God's purpose for your life. Now here's teacher and author Richard Harden. Welcome to God's Pure Word of Faith. I'm Richard Harden, and again I want to thank the Lord and the management of KLRN Radio for this great opportunity to share God's Word with you today. I want to share with you about fear and deliverance from fear today. Delivers from fear because uh, so many people that I've you know heard listening to radios and television like this are just filled with fear, and uh, it's just a, a major part of their life, and it's it's hurting them daily from you know making decisions for the Lord and everything because they're so tied up with these different fears. Now God's exalted His Word above all His names and everything. God and His Word are one and the same. And it's his word that delivers us, sets us free. Like in, uh, well, let's see, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. It says, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. So his word and Christ, the power, are one and the same. And so if we read and receive his word then into our heart, we receive then, you know, the living creator of the universe, the uh, power of the creation creator of the universe in us and now how do we get in a situation into where we can overcome these fears and everything is what I want to share with you today because um, it comes back to everything we do must be through faith to be pleasing to God he comes to us through his mercy love his love to us his grace in our heart when we invite him to come in and, and receive him into our heart at salvation his grace in working in our heart his love and uh, his mercy love grace and then charity which we don't hear much of nowadays and everything but charity is a work of God's love in and through a Christian and allowing his love then to flow through the Christian to someone else 
mercy. See, God comes to us in so many different ways, but there is only one way we can come back and be pleasing to God. Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith it's impossible to please God, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Now see, we have a lot of people being taught today in different areas that God does not work in our lives personally. That, you know, the scripture, we just take the scriptures and interpret them best we can and just start trying to live a good life according to the scripture and everything. And, and yes, we should be doing that. But he comes into our hearts through his spirit. Jesus says in John 6, 63, my words are spirit and they are life. See, when we then receive his words into our heart, they come alive in us and it, we have then a personal relationship with God by Christ being in his living word being in our heart. And his living word is the creator of the universe. He spoke, he said, let there be light. Christ went forth. It's the same living word that spoke to Moses in Hebrews 11.26. It says, Moses esteemed the riches of Christ greater than all the riches of Egypt. Now see, so uh, Christ in us, but now still there are so many Christians, it appears, that are you know, bound up in uh, fears and everything. Let me share with you some scriptures here. Uh, well, first, fear is defined in the, in the dictionary. It says, uh, well, the fear of the Lord is like a reverence, an honor, and respect to God. And he expects us, you know, to accept and obey. So there could be uh, even in that, you know, fear of the Lord, uh, some anxiety or trembling, depending on, you know, if, if we know that we're in God's will or, or or if we know that we're not in God's will, you know, like that, that would have to do with our, certainly our close relationship with the Lord and everything. But what he wants us to do when he talks about fear of the Lord in the scripture is talking about for us to reverence him, for us to, you know, uh, well, be cautious around him and, and respect and honor him. But there is a fear of trembling and anxiety and everything and when we think about, you know, maybe some of the things we've done that we know we shouldn't have. Now, there's other fear besides fear of the Lord. You know, the other fears I'm going to discuss in a minute. Uh, fear of all else. That is all else. Well, the devil, maybe our boss or uh, terrorist or robbers or things like this. This type of fear is what he wants to set us free of. And this type of fear brings brings a person to a powerless condition, uncontrollable expectation of hurt and harm. You know, you're you're so afraid of what's gonna happen. You're anxious and trembling and you're it's fearful of the unknown because you don't know what's gonna take place and like this. And that is what the Lord wants to set us free of. This uncontrollable fear of all things beside him. Now, it's certainly, uh, well, smart to fear the Lord because, you know, uh, in the end, we're going to have to stand before him at the judgment seat of Christ for Christians and at the white throne judgment for others. But anyway, um, in Deuteronomy chapter 6, God started out and he says, uh, now these are the commandments, the statutes and judgments which the Lord your God command to teach you that you might do them in the land when you go to possess it, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and covenants which I command thee this day. And he says that thou and thy son, thy son's son, you know, all your generations like that, um, the days of your life like that, that may be prolonged. Deuteronomy 10, it says, Now Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God and walk in his ways to love him? See, hopefully this relationship of fear of God, once we start, you know, walking with him, will develop into a loving relation. Proverbs chapter 31, 30 says, Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Proverbs 14, a wise man feareth and departeth from evil. Now see, that is what happens to most of us, you know, as, as we're growing up as young people and we start recognizing God and we don't know them particularly, that's God really teaching us and everything, but Jesus says they shall all be taught of God. 
every man therefore that comes and learns of the Father, you know, that comes unto me. Well, God's teaching us, and even though we may not recognize it, know it's God, as we learn more and more about him like that, it says the wise person, you know, feareth, and will start saying, hey, I better do something, you know, uh, to prepare for, you know, leaving this physical world. I need to do something, you know, because uh, is there a life out there? Is God there? Is God real? You know, and, and start kind of seeking and asking and being open to God to learn, you know, about him. It says, the fear of the Lord then is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. And then in Psalms 85, surely his salvation is nigh them or close to them that fear him. That glory may dwell in the land. It's for those that have reverence, respect, like that, his salvation is near them. Psalms 25 says, The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. You know, it's not secret because he hides it from us. It's just, you know, uh, we've got to be concerned enough about him and about his ways and what he wants for us that we'll actually be open to his teaching and even more than just being open, but we'll do some seeking. Because in uh, what is it, Second Chronicles twelve fourteen, uh, Solomon's son Rehoboam said he did evil because he prepared not his heart to seek the Lord. See, you, you got to make some kind of preparation, like in there. Well, I I need to start maybe checking this out for myself. I need to you know find out just the best I can what life's all about. Then uh, Proverbs thirty, excuse me, Psalm thirty three says. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy. See, uh, when we set ourselves to seek the Lord and everything, it's not just a one-way activity. Because as we set ourselves to seek the Lord, God certainly wants to respond. And um, because he wants all of us to come into a fellowship with him. And his eyes are open to us, and and he will respond to us. If If you seek him with a honest heart. I've told a lot of people, you know, the game we used to play, like uh, 20 questions, where somebody would get up and act out something, and uh, the audience would have 20 questions they could ask the person, they had to answer honestly, and they'd see if they could guess what he was doing and everything. Well, if you do that with the Lord, if you have honest questions to the Lord, you know, as you're seeking Him or wanting to get related to Him and everything, uh, ask Him these questions. I knew a a Jewish man that I used to work with about 25 or 30 years ago, and uh, we were talking about this one day, and he said, uh, I haven't told most people this, but he said, when I was about five or six years old, uh, we were pretty poor. My mom and dad uh, didn't have all that much money just to go out and buy things they needed and everything, and our refrigerator went out. And uh, he said that it, it upset his mom and dad so much and everything. He was upset because they were. And, and they left him there and uh, with his older brother and sister or something like that. And they went to town looking for a refrigerator. Well, he said that uh, he was there and he had been hearing about God and everything. And he said, God, if you're really real, like, you know, they say, if you're real, fix that refrigerator. And he said the instant he said, fix that refrigerator, it started humming and working. And when his mom and dad came back, they were so happy and everything. The refrigerator worked. He said that refrigerator worked for years after that. But see, there's a lot of things God will do just to make his presence known to people if they're really honest in their seeking. And Jeremiah 29, 13 says, You shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. See, but it's got to be an honest, open heart, you know, doing like that. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. His mercy endures forever, see. So even though mercy was his main uh, connection or covenant with the people of the Old Testament, like in Isaiah 59, 21, uh, God says, this is my covenant with them. I'll put my spirit up on them and my word in their mouth. See, it says his spirit of mercy, his one-way love to them and everything. And his word, Jesus says in John 17, 17, um, Sanctify them by thy word. Thy word is truth. See, so his word. So in the Old Testament, then, like also it says in Psalms 25:10, mercy and truth are all the ways of the Lord to those who obey his covenants and testimonies. 
so all the godly people of the Old Testament they had his spirit on them and his word his living word Christ to them now so we still have that today we have his living word on us and he keeps us from having automobile wrecks and all kind of things like that and he works in our lives daily in ways that we aren't even aware of in, in so many of them but we have a better covenant though not only do we have his spirit on us and around us protect us things his word to us Christ to us we also have Christ in our hearts like it says in as Christians it is as it says in Ezekiel 36 26 a new heart also will give you a new spirit will I put within you I'll take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I'll give you a heart of flesh and I'll put my spirit in you see when his spirit comes in us then not only has he forgiven our sins he's created in us a new pure heart puts his spirit of love in us and we are a new creature like it says in uh, second Corinthians five seventeen. if any man be in Christ he is a new creature so see we have all of this and he tells us then that you know we need to get right related with him and then Psalms 145 he'll fulfill the desire of them that fear him he will hear their cry and save them well he'll do that for the people of the Old Testament here how much more for his children see we're children of God the Old Testament people didn't get God's spirit in their heart and become uh, children of God like Galatians 4 6 says and because your sons God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying Abba Father wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son if a son then heir of God through Christ see we're a joint heir with Jesus through Christ so if, if he would do this for the people of the Old Testament he'll also hear their cry and save them he certainly will us the Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him and for those of us that fear him or are seeking to serve him first John three twenty two says whatsoever we ask we receive him because we obey his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight and to be pleasing remember it's got to be through us accepting and obeying his word because we can only please God through faith acceptance and obedience to his word it says don't be wise in your own eyes but fear the Lord depart from evil and then Proverbs three twenty five: be not afraid of sudden fear or terror that comes on the wicked your strength he will not allow your foot to be snared fear the Lord's beginning of wisdom Proverbs 10 fear the Lord prolongeth the days and just so many of these things he says fear the Lord the fountain of life in Proverbs 14 27 Proverbs 15 fear of the Lord's instruction of wisdom Proverbs 19 the fear of the Lord tendeth to life and he that shall abide satisfied he shall not be visited with evil now James 4 7 for us in the New Testament it says that in a different way but it says you know submit to God submit to his word submit to God resist the devil he'll flee Proverbs 22 fear the Lord or riches honor and life now these riches here are whatever you need for life and with blessings that you can share with others he doesn't expect us just meet payday to payday but he expects us you know he, he wants to bless us to where we can have some to share with others so that others will see how God treats his people let not thy heart envy sinners but be thou in the fear of the Lord all day long now the fear of God helps to encourage us to seek God and to learn of him about his expectations for us how he wants us to be related to him and his great and precious promises like second Peter 1 2 says grace and peace be multiplied to you through a knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord see so our knowledge helps open us up then to God's promises and everything and and so much more comes to us in blessings and everything from the Lord Psalms 32 1 God even told the people I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you should go I will guide you with my own eyes see he's right there gonna be with us every step of the way but now as we grow with him then in fellowship and everything it sh should turn from a fear of God into a loving of God first John 3 verse 1 2 said behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called sons of God we are sons of God not just call that we are sons of God therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not beloved now we are sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be but we know that when he appears we shall be like him 
Okay, First John 4, 18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. See, that's what we're shooting for in our lives, is to develop a relationship with the Lord, studying His Word and the different promises. The promises, you know, for uh, protection, the promises for our substance or what you know, our food or clothing, things like this, and promise for, you know, just all these things that we need in our life like this, develop that trust and loving relationship with the Lord, and that perfect love then will cast out the, these fears. And then God says, well, in 2 Timothy 1, 7, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power. Power now in 1 Corinthians 1, 24, Paul says, Christ is the power of God. And uh, so here, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, Christ, the power of God, and of love, and of a sound mind, because see, when you have all those fears in you like that, you can't have a sound mind. You'll have confusion. You'll have everything else like this. As Christians, we are spirit, soul, and body. You know, and our body then, our six, our five senses, you know, we see things, we hear things, we taste things. We, you know, uh, the, these sensors of ours, um, smelling and touching things, they, they take information and, and send it into our mind and our mind then evaluates this and uh, causes us to have strong emotions depending on what we see uh, and causes our emotional being then our mind and soul excuse me our, our mind and emotions are our soul and you know we need peace in our soul we need our mind uh, you know bringing in this information but if it's some kind of negative information we need to take it to the Lord the scripture says that we should be submitting every thought to the obedience of Christ. So when our mind opens up something to us like that that would at first start trying to scare us, we need to submit that to Christ, His living word. So that means we need His living word. We need our hearts filled with His word so the the things we say, or excuse me, the things we hear, smell, or taste, or like this, that would cause us to be fearful, you know. We need to evaluate it based on the things of Christ that are in our heart. It doesn't need to be based on, you know, uh, what people have told us or, you know, things like this that would scare us and the devil trying to cause fear and everything. We need to be submitting every thought to the obedience of Christ and submitting to God's word and what God has to say about it. Now, if there is anything that we need to fear, Hebrews 4, 1 and 2 states, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left of entering into his rest. See that rest in the uh, soul, in the, in the mind and emotions. Be any promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to fall short of it. For unto us was a gospel priest as well as in them, but the word priest did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So when the gospels preached, when any of God's words preached, we need it in our heart to give us that peace in our mind and emotions. Because that's where it's going to come from. Because we're going to get all kind of messages from the world through our fleshly being, you know, and our, our sensors, our touching, smelling, tasting, hearing, and seeing. All kind of things are going to come into us. But our mind then should be set to where we set our minds on the things of Christ in our heart. We should have His Word in our heart to evaluate that. And that would then bring peace to our mind and emotions. Hebrews 6.12 says, That you be not slowful or lazy, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. See, we don't just get those promises filling our hearts just because we've become a Christian. When we receive Christ in our heart, God expects us to receive more of His Word in our heart. And we study and receive more of it. The more of God's Word that we receive in our heart, see, in a sense, like then Christ is growing in our heart. We're growing in a knowledge of God and Jesus. And that's where Peter says that, you know, grace and peace be multiplied to you through a knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. We need to be uh, studying, accepting, receiving God's Word into our heart so that we come into a, a joyful relationship with God instead of a fear of God. We're looking forward to Him, you know, and, and we enjoy seeing His presence throughout the day. And in Hebrews 13, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man or the devil shall do unto me. Psalms 56, in God I will praise His Word. In God I have put my trust. See, we're putting our trust in His Word. Like this, so throughout the daytime, 
Ephesians 5.19 says, Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. See, uh, keeping your soul happy, keeping your soul filled with His Word, giving thanks always to all things to the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourself to one another in the fear of God. But then see, uh, having a joyful melodies and things like this in, in your heart throughout the daytime and then counting your blessings and like that. God's Pure Word of Faith with Richard Harden can now be heard Monday through Friday mornings at 7 a.m. Central, 8 Eastern, and on Saturday and Sunday mornings at 6 a.m. Central, 7 Eastern. Join him and let's turn our country back to God. It only takes a spark to start a forest fire. Let's get on fire for the Lord, right here on KLRN Radio and the Spark Radio Network. Visit Richard's website at raharden.com. That's the World Wide Web at rahardin.com. At his website, you can see a summary of the six books he has written, where purchases may be made. He also has a link to 18 videos on YouTube and several blogs about Christian beliefs. If you prefer, visit amazon.com backslash Kindle and type in Richard Harden to see and purchase his books. Each of my programs are being saved so that you can listen to them at any time. There's just four simple steps to find the past programs. Go to www.spreaker.com. That's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. Enter my name, Richard Harden, in the search box in the top center of the home page. Click on the brown icon, which has the Bible, two candlesticks, and a cross in the background. A list of my programs will come up. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. You're listening to God's Pure Word of Faith with Richard Harden. Richard will guide you through the Bible and help you find God's purpose for your life. Now here's teacher and author, Richard Harden. Welcome back. I've been discussing with you about, you know, the fear of God, how the fear of God in our lives as we grow in our knowledge of God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, Apostle Peter says we grow in um, peace and, and grow in, you know, just a, a, a loving relationship with uh, the Lord, instead of, you know, having some type of fear of God. And it, Scripture even says that, you know, perfect love uh, casts out fear. And that's what we're shooting for in our life with the Lord, is to uh, walk with Him daily in such a way that we know He's there. And uh, he's, he's there just in all areas. Let me read you some Scriptures now real quick, in the Old Testament, about some of these areas that the Lord tells us and encourages us not to fear that we should, you know, uh, uh, trust and know that he's right there with us. Like in Genesis to Abraham, fear not, I am your shield and your reward. And then in, uh, to Hagar in Genesis, I have heard your son's prayer, and I am with you, I will bless you. And to Rachel, one of the wives of the Old Testament, says, that, fear not, I sh thou shalt have this son. And to Jacob, fear not, I will make of thee a great nation. And to Moses, fear not, I have delivered him into your hand. I have, and again to Moses, fear not, I have delivered him to your hand. Um, Deuteronomy, he says to the nation Israel, fear not, do not tremble or be terrified. Do not be dismayed or confused or something like this, he told Joshua. And then he says, I have, fear not, I have delivered them into your hands. And just on and on like this and to the other gods that these other countries had around Israel. God told them, fear not, you shall not fear, bow, or serve any of these other gods. And then again, it says, fear not, you shall not fear other gods. Because, see, they were just made of hand, clay, metal, gold, or something like this. They weren't really gods. Second Chronicles chapter 20, when Jehoshaphat 
uh, and uh, children of Israel were surrounded by three armies, uh, the very second verse of that chapter it says that Jehoshaphat feared. Now here's a man of God fearing. See, because all of a sudden he was uh, caught with a surprise and he didn't know what to do. See, that doubt normally is is what opens the door to fears. Now, fear not, nor be dismayed. Don't be confused. The Lord is with you. And then he set himself to seek the Lord. He uh, prayed, fasted, brought all Judah together. They fasted, and God spoke up and said, It's not your battle, it's mine. And, you know, he's the one then that God told him, Just march you out of the gate singing praises, you know, and, and you'll see the victory. Set yourself in the valley of Ziz, and you'll see the victory. And he did that the next day. Now, and Ahaz, he says, Fear not, neither be faint-hearted. You know, don't, don't be, you know, kind of troubled or fearful in your heart. Um, God told Isaiah, said, not have a fearful heart. He said, be strong. God will come with a vengeance. Just own and own like this to the people of the Old Testament. To Daniel, fear not. Thy words were heard. Uh, fear not. Peace be unto you. All through here. And, and then to uh, Joseph in the New Testament. He, he was fearful of taking Mary to be his wife because she was, you know, pregnant with a child that wasn't his. And in those days, a woman would be, you know, stoned to death for doing something like that. But here, the Holy Spirit came to Joseph and said, fear not to take Mary to be your wife. And then uh, he told the people in Sermon on the Mount, uh, fear not, for you are much more valuable than the sparrows. And uh, Zacharias, fear not, thy prayer has been heard. Fear not, they have found favor with God. And on and on like this. And then even on the night that Jesus was born, the shepherds said, the angel told him, Fear not, for I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be unto all people. For in you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. You know, to calm the shepherds down. And when they went to see him that night, he said they went abroad and they told, you know, about uh, Jesus everywhere they went. So all through the scriptures tells us to fear not, to fear not. The only thing that possibly that would be if you want to fear something is fear, like I said a while ago, missing some of God's promises and blessings that he has for you. Fear that because he's got a special calling for all of us. Second Timothy 1 Timothy 1.9 says he saved us and called us to a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace created in Christ Jesus before the world began. That's how special you are to God. I don't care who you are listening. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how young you are. If you can understand what I'm saying, you have a special calling in God's eyes, and you're never going to be fulfilled in this lifetime until you start seeking it because he's created all of us with a void in us that only he can fill. And he'll only fill that void when you invite him to come in and say, humble yourself and say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me. Come into my heart and save me. And I commit my life to you, creating me that new heart. I want to be one of your children, you know. And, and give him that desire. Now, when you call out to Jesus with that, see, his name is the name we must call out to, the only name. He responds then, see, to send the salvation to you. See, your calling out in prayer and everything goes to Jesus. He then sends back then the Spirit of Christ, the living Word, into your heart to create in you the new heart, like in Ezekiel 36, 26, where he says, A new heart also will give you a new spirit will I put within you. I'll take away the stony heart of your face. I'll give you a heart of flesh, and I'll put my spirit in you. And you become a child of God. See, the response from Jesus is what creates in us a new heart and a child of God. That's why I ask so many people, have you received the changed heart? See, you might have said a lot of fancy words or something like that. I did too when I was nine years old. I answered all the preacher's questions right and everything. But I didn't turn to the Lord with all my heart until I was age 33 and said, Lord, please forgive me. You know, if you're real, show me. You know, come into my heart. I want that relationship. If you want a relationship with me, like this, you know. And I said, but I don't want to go on feelings. I want to know you're real and in me, like the Bible says. Well, Things, that's when things changed my life. And I found at age nine, all I'd done was just answer a bunch of questions correctly and join the church. And see, what we do and say has got to be from our heart of wanting to get rid of our sins and repent and turn from sins. I didn't 
recognize myself for being a sinner when I was nine years old. I knew I did a lot of things that were bad, but see, that was just me and the people I did bad things to. You know, it, it wasn't between me and God. But, you know, we've got to turn to the Lord. Jeremiah 29, 13, You shall seek me and find me when you search me with all your heart. God won't hear an answer, a half-hearted thing, you know, just wanting an insurance policy or something like that. You've got to want to turn from those sins against God, you know, that separation of your heart from God, and say, Lord, please forgive me of that sin. Come into my heart and cleanse me of that sin and create in me the new heart, the new life. Now, see, uh, that's what we need to do. Now, in the... Uh, sidetrack there for a minute, but <laughs> God has not given us the spirit of fear. We need to take a look at this a little closer now so that we can see how to be delivered of this. In listening to a radio program one day, I heard that this preacher was talking, talking about so many different phobias. A phobia is some kind of, you know, real irrational, excessive, persistent fear of some particular thing or situation like spiders, snakes, or height, or flying in planes, things like this. And I looked up on the computer, someone, and there's thousands of them. There's thousands of phobias that people are afraid, and and, and you know, just uh, their lives are just controlled by these things. And many Christians I know seem to express fears as openly as those I know who do not claim to be Christians and who do not attend any church. With all these deliverance ministers around our country and other ministers teaching and preaching and overcoming fear, it seems that Christians should be some of the strongest emotional people in our society. Yet even thousands of ministers themselves walk away from their spiritual callings of preaching and serving with young people and things like that and counseling, and they go into counseling themselves. The reason so many people try to get set free of fear and are unable to is because they do not know their enemy. Now this is the secret to being delivered from fear. Well, it's not really a secret, but it, it seems to be a secret in our society. And I want you to know this morning, this will set you free of fear if you will just hear and receive and do what I share with you. You've got to know your enemy, fear. So their efforts, when these ministers are teaching and preaching all these things around the country about being set free of fear and things like that, it's like a shadow boxer. If you're familiar with shadow boxers, uh, when you're practicing, getting ready to fight and everything, you jump around and you do your fancy moves and you've got such good form and you're dodging here and ducking here and back and forth and you're swinging great swings. But you're not hitting anything because there's nothing there to hit. You're just going through the motions and everything. See, that's what they call shadow boxing. And that's what this is. You're going through the motions of saying the words about getting rid of fear and all this stuff and everything. But you've got to know your enemy. Now listen to this. First, you must determine what fear is if you expect to fight it and win the victory. It's not an gripping emotion like most people say. We are a triune being as Christians. We have a body that you have sensors to bring in information to the soul, which is the mind and the emotions. But inside us, as Christians, is the Spirit of Christ, the third part of our body, you know, our being. We're a triune being. Now, we have Christ in us, the Spirit of God in us. Now, being taught that fear is emotion is not true. Now, fear can cause severe emotions, cause terrorize us. You know, emotions, you know, just paralyze us. And things like this can scare us so bad. Fright, confusion, and all this. But fear is not the emotion. It can cause these severe emotions. Now, and that's important because as Christians, we need to know that if fear is not an emotion, what is it? What is fear if it's not an emotion? Apostle Paul, I've already read the scripture before, tells us in 2 Timothy 1 7, says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear. Well, wait a minute. See the spirit of fear? But of power. Power now. Christ is the power of God. So but God's given us power, Christ, and of his love. God is love. And of a sound mind. See, to stabilize our mind and everything. But the spirit of fear. I've looked up in the concordance, the word fear is used. Uh, oh, 100 times maybe or more, something like that. And they always give a definition of, of how it's used in that particular verse. This one verse, when they gave the definition of 
this one verse how what fear was here it's odd because other places it says you know like torment or this or that or whatever here it just says fear spirit of fear definition of that is fear I'm telling you the spirit of fear is the devil see the devil is the spirit of fear God has not given us the spirit of fear of the devil but of power which is the spirit of Christ Christ the power of God of God's love and of a sound mind now spirit tells us that fear is a spirit and it certainly is not God's spirit therefore it is the devil fear is not an emotion fear creates emotions strong emotions but fear is not from the devil fear is the devil anytime you get above being anxious and start becoming fearful the devil is making his presence known to you to try to terrorize you so much in your emotional being your mind and emotions that you'll be unable to find God's presence or will see that's what he's trying to do he's trying to confuse you he's trying to terrorize you so that you won't be able to calm down like Jehoshaphat did when he was surrounded by those three armies he said he feared and set himself to seek the Lord then when God spoke to him he got out of that doubt he had and he was set free of the fear okay it's the devil's presence being in you or attacking you to terrorize you so much that you'll be unable to find God's presence as long as he can keep you in terror see this strong emotion he'll have the advantage in the circumstances as Jesus says in John 10 10 the thief cometh not but for steal kill and destroy I have come that you might have life and life more abundantly the devil will not stop tormenting you confusing you in these circumstances until he has your life if he can or until you turn with all your heart to the Lord for help or one other condition until God in his mercy intervenes to help you without you asking him to see now as Christians we should have already asked him to a long time ago so God shouldn't have to intervene in mercy in our lives in this situation did you be an answer to our prayers did but see we've got to turn to the Lord with all our heart and find out what to do now a couple of questions that need to be answered this is going to help you get delivered now of your fear if you really want to how is the devil able to attack us Christians in a specific area to terrorize us and second question how do we get free or escape from his attack now these two answers are naturally tied together but for clarity I'm going to separate them first how do we as Christians in uh, how does it, is the devil able to attack us in these specific areas like that and create so much you know emotional terror and things like that first when we violate or reject any of God's word or will we're giving Satan the advantage and right to do that in our lives the devil has no power all power in the heaven and earth is given to Jesus Matthew 28 18 but when we reject God's word we give Satan control in these circumstances now for an example 2 Corinthians 2 10 and 11 states that we must forgive others lest we give Satan advantage because see when we're failing to forgive someone we're blocking God's love into our heart for that person we're willfully blocking God from us so we're giving Satan advantage Ephesians 4 26 27 says be angry sin not neither give place to the devil see again if we do that we're giving place to the devil because we're blocking God's love in our heart for someone that we're angry about now if we reject God's love in our heart Christ see we're giving Satan the advantage to come in and do things like that uh, we're blocking God's love from us see that is so important it's not just a good theory to forgive other people a good philosophy like that it Jesus says he that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin. And then um, 1 Peter 3 7 says, Husbands, dwell your wives according to knowledge, being joint heirs of grace of life as into the weaker vessel, lest your prayers be hindered. See, your prayers going to be hindered if you aren't in your right relations with your wife, your children, and other people at work, and things like this. 
and it's failed to even seek the Lord. If you haven't been seeking the Lord for his holy calling, like I mentioned a couple of times already, Second Timothy 1, 9, he saved us, called us to a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, created in Christ Jesus. If you haven't been setting, uh, seeking that, you've been doing evil. I don't care who you are listening. You may have been preaching for the last 30 years, but if you haven't really set yourself to seek God's holy calling in your life, see, and know for sure that's what it is, you know, that, that's evil to not have the confidence and trust it. Um, now, God's made provisions for our sins to be forgiven on the cross, and our sins are totally forgiven when we come to Christ. You'll invite him to come into our heart. But now we still commit acts of sin acts of sin the same as lost people or you know sinners do so we're committing things uh, if we don't if we know to do good doeth it not to him it is sin or an act of sin uh, the way we treat people can be acts of sin even though our hearts are still not totally separated from God we're still Christians and everything like that but we're not walking in proper fellowship pleasing to God because we're not accepting and obeying his word now so how then that's what causes the devil to be able to have an open door to get into us. Now, how do we shut that door? Get our hearts right with God like the old people of old times ago used to say, praying through. They weren't praying through to seek God. They were praying through to get their hearts right with him. Therefore, if you've rejected any of God's word or will for you, to teach a class that he's asked you to teach, to work with the young people, the elderly, to preach full time, or whatever it is, if you've rejected anything from God, You've rejected his love from your heart for that particular situation, and you've given the devil advantage in your life. Because that's what revival is now. Revival is now for us, each one of you listening, for me, to go back, set ourselves to seek the Lord with all our heart, and say, Lord, give me another chance. Show me things that I've rejected of you. Help me to close these doors to the devil. Because, see, as long as you have those doors open of doubt and things like that, doubting his word, maybe you don't even know God's word. You must make sure your heart is right with God before you start trying to fight the devil because James says, submit to God or submit to his spirit, or his word, resist the devil and he'll flee. And it's got to be his pure word. And you got to be accepting God's word because Ephesians 6.16 says, but above all, put on the shield of faith, which will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Now, if his fiery darts are getting through you, You've got to admit then you must not have a shield of faith up or it must have some big holes in it. And that comes from either you not accepting God's word, like John 15, 7, you abide in me and my words abide in you. Ask what you will and it should be done. You say, oh, that, 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 that's not true. I can't just ask anything like that. But that's what Jesus said. Study that scripture. What does it mean if his words abiding in us? You're not going to be asking silly questions if his words are abiding in you. Now, so you may not be accepting some of God's promises that you've heard, but you've got to accept and receive. Like it, what was it? Hebrews 11, 6 says, He that cometh to God must not only believe that he is, but that he's a reward of them and diligently seek him. Now, you've got to you know, trust that he's going to reward and answer you to be able to diligently seek him. So you've got to know his word, accepting his promises then, and then it's quite possible that what you claim to be his word and your friends claim to be his word is a false doctrine. Because look at the three or four hundred different denominations we have around our country. One of them says speaking in tongues of the devil. Us says speaking in tongues is the greatest thing on earth. And it's just back and forth. Some say God doesn't heal people like he did in the Old Testament and things like this. And just, you know, people say all kind of things. You are responsible for your own beliefs. When you stand before Christ, stand before God in the eternity, it's not going to be what your brother, sister, mother, dad, or preacher believed. It's going to be what you believed and what you responded to. That's why each of us are personally responsible for our choices and our decisions. Hebrews 4.1 again. Let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, that grace and peace, any of you should seem to come short of it. If you must fear, fear missing God's great and precious promises, and even fear about your own salvation. Have you received that changed heart? Do you remember when you cried out to get rid of your sins? When you cried out to say, Lord, please forgive me. Come into my heart and save me. Now, that's, that's very important. You may have said those words, 
or some similar to that back there. But did Jesus respond then by creating you the new heart, the new life, and, and cleaning up your old heart and taking all those sins and things out? And see, you should know if he did it because he will only do it if you ask him to do it. So if you saw your heart as being that old like trash can full of stuff and you ask God to forgive you and clean it up and he gives you a new clean heart then and puts his spirit of love in him, in you, you'll know it. You can't keep from knowing it because that's just what he, you ask him to do. But if you can't think back and remember that right now your greatest priority should be to seek the Lord with all your heart until you know for sure that you've received him in your heart as personal Lord and Savior. And then allow his words to come in and, and just give him a chance. If you don't believe God heals today everything like he used to heal, say, Lord, please help me. There was a man in the New Testament that said, Lord, I believe. I believe he could do anything. I believe, you know, help thou my unbelief. Help my rejecting. Help me to receive your word into my heart, in other words. You know, pray and ask God. He wants us to have his word in our heart. He's not keeping it from us, hiding it, something like that. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. It's not secret because he hides it from us. It's secret because he wants us to love him, care enough to seek him. And if you're out there listening today and you'd like to receive him as your personal Lord and Savior, I would like to encourage you to do it right now and to keep praying and seeking. The scripture says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, just calling on his name now and saying the words is, is not going to get you salvation. But if you truly want to receive the new heart, the new life, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, then that's you You must respond to mix the gospel like that. There's a scripture in Hebrews 4, 2. It says, The gospel preached to them did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. And the way you mix it with faith is to humble yourself before God and say, Lord, please forgive me. And... Uh, 1 John 1 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and to give us that new clean heart and to put His Spirit in us and we become a child of God. Like it says in Galatians 4 6, And because your sons God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son, and if a son, then heir of God through Christ. Abba means daddy father. Say so he wants that close relationship with us. We become a child of God. And if you don't have that and know that you've received the changed heart, pray with me now. It don't have to be exact words and everything, but the intent of it. Jesus, I ask you to please forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of all my sins. I want to turn from my sins. I surrender my heart and life to you and invite your spirit, the spirit of Christ, to create in me a new heart, clean heart, and come to live in my heart. In your name, Jesus, I ask. Amen. See, he wants all of us. There's not been one person born on this earth that God didn't want to receive his spirit. Like, for example, the uh, Matthew, let's see, 2541, Jesus was talking about separation of sheep from the goats of white throne judgment, something like this. He wanted to depart from me. He said, you wicked, into the everlasting, eternal uh, punishment of fire. He said, created for the devil and his angels. See, hell and the lake of fire was created for the devil and his angels, not for us, not for people. God loves everybody with a And you know, as Christians, we have a new heart from God and the spirit of Christ, God's power in us. God is love. And his spirit is in our hearts. In John, 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, it says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love, God, casts out fear, because fear is torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love or God yet. So in James 4, 7, the scripture says, Submit therefore to God, or his spirit in you. Resist the devil, fear, and he, the devil in fear, will flee from you. When you start getting apprehensive about something, like starting to fly or a storm coming, looking ahead at what might happen to you in your job, your health, don't just worry and think about these future events or maybe something that you're even going through right now. Philippians 4, 6 says, when you start getting anxious, turn to God then by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. 
let your requests be known to God. Your request and your concern to be known to God. Worrying won't help you one bit, but it will cause you to miss God's blessings to you during that time. So, choose, make the choice yourself to set yourself in submission to God in prayer, talking to God, and counting your blessings from past things, experiences with God. Then watch the devil and fear flee from you. Now, always let your anxiety be a red flag to remind you to pray. God loves you. He will hear you. And in First Colossians one twenty seven, Christ in us, our hope of glory. So have a good day. God bless you. And be set free. John 3, 16, 17. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him, Jesus, should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now my revision is this for John three sixteen. For God so loved the people of the world that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus, that Jesus should endure the loneliness, the suffering of the perfect walk of faith, and the painful sufferings of his seven sprinklings of his blood on the cross by the crown of thorns, the plucking of his beard, the nails in his two feet, the nails in his two hands, and the terrible stripes on his back, that Jesus would go through all this suffering. God allowed these sufferings in his mercy so that all of God's already pre-elected and predestined people prior to birth to die and go to heaven, that they would actually die and go to heaven. That sounds so ridiculous. If only predestined or elected people prior to their birth go to heaven, then there would have been no need for the work and suffering of Jesus. No one's destiny would or will ever be changed by Jesus' suffering and death on the cross for our sins and salvation because everything required for our salvation would have already been done prior to our birth by God's act of electing and predestining us to heaven or hell before birth. After God has predestined us to heaven or hell, there would be no need or no more to be done in heaven and earth. It would already be finished before our birth. So what's happening here is the devil hates Jesus so much that he's come up with this Calvinist, devilish, deceived theology that would have us think that we're predestined or elected prior to birth to go to heaven or hell, and that would make all the suffering and work of Jesus as our Savior totally unnecessary, totally worthless, and Jesus totally useless. For his life and death on the cross would not change anything prior to, you know, people dying and going to heaven or hell. Because it's already been done by God predestining and electing them to heaven or hell before we were born. See how ridiculous that is? Good day. God bless you. Visit Richard's website at raharden.com. That's the World Wide Web at R-A-H-A-R-D-I-N dot com. At his website, you can see a summary of the six books he has written, where purchases may be made. He also has a link to 18 videos on YouTube and several blogs about Christian beliefs. If you prefer, visit Amazon.com backslash Kindle and type in Richard Harden to see and purchase his books. Each of my programs are being saved so that you can listen to them at any time. There's just four simple steps to find the past programs. Go to www.spreaker.com. That's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. Enter my name, Richard Harden, in the search box in the top center of the home page. Click on the brown icon, which has the Bible, two candlesticks, and a cross in the background. A list of my programs will come up. God's Pure Word of Faith with Richard Harden can now be heard Monday through Friday mornings at 7 a.m. Central, 8 Eastern. 
and on Saturday and Sunday mornings at 6 a.m. Central, 7 Eastern. Join him and let's turn our country back to God. It only takes a spark to start a forest fire. Let's get on fire for the Lord. Right here on KLRN Radio and the Spark Radio Network. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign.